how uh, have uh, obviously you you were ready for the opportunity when you got it a few weeks ago and you've been playing well, but how much do you think you've developed just over the last three games and, and started playing all those snaps? What have you gotten better at just in this month? Um, I think just uh, you know each game you feel like you get a little better at recognition, um, just being able to kind of see how things unfold. Um, you know maybe that first game I was pretty locked in on you know my initial key. Um, but now, I don't know if it kind of feels like each game you're, you're able to start seeing a little more, you know, your, your scope kind of expands, um, whether it be, you know, offensive lineman feet or stances, um, you know, different formations, just uh, more than just what you're supposed to be staring at in every play. You know, you kind of get, get a couple tips. And, uh, uh, you know, D always says uh, when the offense breaks the formation, um, they're telling you a story or you're reading the book. And so I think um, your ability to read that book, you know, the more snaps you get that are live, um, it allows you to read a little better. So what's it been like for you emotionally balancing getting this opportunity, but the team not getting the results you want? Uh, frustrating. Um, you know, I know I've been able to go out and make a couple good plays, you know, do some things um, that have helped this team. But um, if I'm not helping us, you know, get the win, then in my mind I didn't do enough. and. You know, last game, you know, had some tackles, you know, made some good plays, open field, all that. But, you know, I feel like there were opportunities for me to make, you know, bigger game-changing plays, plays that can help uh, will a victory uh, for the team. And um, when I'm given opportunities like this, that's what I expect for myself. Um, and that's how I want to help this team. So, you know, it's, again, it's fun. It's it's a, a joyful thing getting to go out there and play on defense. Um, but at the same time, it comes with more responsibility. And um, I believe I'm... Now that I'm, you know, starting in this role, um, held responsible helping this team win, and, and that's the end goal, and that's um, that's what I'm striving for. So you're not one to cut yourself slack and think, okay, I've been doing well for myself. No, not at all. Um, no, not at all. I like everybody wants the individual performance, um, and you know what? If you play a perfect game and your team loses. Maybe you can smile, but the thing is, there's, there's no such thing as a perfect game. You know what I mean? You know, you could get a PFF 99, but at the end of the day, you missed a point right there. And that point right there, who knows what could have happened if you had made it right. So um, just getting out there and, you know, trying to play the perfect game. And if we win, then, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll watch the film. I'll celebrate with my team and, and watch the film and be like, oh, okay, like I could have done these things better. But, you know, you're still able to be pretty happy. But, you know, if you lose and even if there's just one, two, three plays that you feel like, ah, I could have made a game-changing play right there and you didn't make it, it kind of hurts. So um, just trying to get back to work and, and get out there and uh, make those plays next week. Has this always been the way you are? Or is it developed like joining the NFL more so? Mm, no, I'd say it's always been the way. You know, I played at Idaho and, um, you know, we had a good nine-win bowl, bowl win season, but – but we lost a lot, <laughs> and it and it was uh, obviously in, in college it's a little interesting because you're you're trying to make the NFL. So even despite the losses, you're trying to put up you know numbers, different things like that. But at the end of the day, like you're in the locker room and in the meetings and in class and hanging out with your best friends who are also on the field with you. Um, and I know maybe NFL isn't quite like college, but at the end of the day, some of my best friends in the world are in that locker room back there, um, and. I see how much everybody puts in. I see how hard everybody's working from the staff to the players to everybody else. So, um, you know, I don't think you can really see that and be a part of that emotionally and then just be like, ah, I'm happy I did well. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, like, everybody's job is on the line for wins. Like, if we win, we all do well. If we win, we all succeed. And if we lose, then, you know, other things happen. So... Um, striving for wins, I think, is, is really what's most important. And with wins, it'll make everything look better for everybody at every position. So, and Two questions for you. Uh, one, you and Alante Taylor kind of have a, a similarity in the regard of you all both kind of got, as we keep saying, this opportunity kind of around the same time mm. to step in and make plays and contribute. How frustrated were you and the entire defense when he got his first career interception and it was called back to a, a somewhat, I guess, you know, some could say questionable uh, holding penalty? Yeah, obviously on the field, you don't know what the penalty was. So you just hear it and you're like, ah, like 
you know, I went up to him and was like, hey, we'll get get a, get a, you know, get another one for us. Like, go get another one for us because he's an amazing yeah. player. And I was so excited for him. I know everybody was. You could see all of our all of our reaction. Um, but then, you know, got taken away. And at the time, you don't know what it was. For all you know, it could have been the most egregious penalty of the year. Um, but then watching it, you know, Drew Brees posted it. <laughs> the guys were showing me on the plane. <laughs> I don't have social media, but the guys showed me on the plane. And, ah, yeah, that's, that's frustrating. And it hurts. And, um, you know, sometimes, like, at the end of the day, everybody's human. Um, at the end of the day, everybody's going to make mistakes. Um, I remember I had one last year against the Titans, and they took away Marcus Williams' interception because they said I, I hit a guy. I hit uh, Tannehill in an egregious way, which was not true. Um, and they, everybody's human. Everybody makes mistakes. And um, I'm just excited because I know, I know Tay's going to get out there and get another one. And I'm going to celebrate double as hard this time because it's, uh, it's kind of in the bank form now. And Cade, not, I apologize for the, the seriousness of, of this topic. And if you've been asked this before, I, I also apologize. But just wanted to give you a chance to, to touch on the um, – the events that, that took place at, at your uh, your alma mater. I was covering Southeastern versus Idaho, obviously Southeastern Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Um, got, got the win in kind of a thrilling game. Just uh, did, Were you able to kind of watch that game, but more importantly, you know, the coach and the environment and the, the character around that team to kind of play for, um, for the university after what was an extremely, you know, sad event that took place there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was able to. Um, obviously, disappointing ending, but um, really proud of that group. Proud of um, the university. Proud of Moscow as as a whole. Just um, you know, praying for the families, praying for the friends, praying for um, everybody involved in it. You know, my prayer for them is that um, God can be glorified in a way that only He can do. Because it's a disgusting and, and wicked thing that happened, but. Uh, I know he can turn it for good. So those are my prayers for the family, for the university. Um, I'm proud of the team. You know, made the playoffs. That's awesome. I mean, first time in who knows how long. And um, I'm excited for them. I'm, again, like you said, proud that, you know, they decided to step up and and play for more than themselves. Um, And I just pray that they continue to represent the community well and and, uh, stand there for for the the amazing community that Moscow is. I know not very many people have been there, but uh, it's a special place. And... um, Prayers for them. Thank you for sharing that. Welcome. Hey, Caden, um, normally a four and eight season is, you know, the season's pretty much done, but this team still has a chance just because of how things have played out in the NFC South. So what's kind of the mindset of this team, would you say, going to uh, Tampa? Let's go. Like, that's the mindset. Let's go. I mean, yeah, we're a game behind, but in the day, we get to see – all three of our division opponents, and we get two other games, so we have five opportunities to go out there, and um, and right our wrongs. You know, it's uh, it's crazy that we still have the opportunity, but we do. So um, that, I think that's the mindset. Let's go. Let's go get it done. Let's go win. Let's go be the team that we've always said we we're going to be. And I know it hasn't been pretty so far, but the opportunity is still there. So let's do it. <laughs> 